Many thanks for the invitation to address you, and I'm happy to, happy to tell you a few words about uh, what we know about climate change and, uh, and how it affects uh, agricultural conditions. From WMO side, we are, we are interested in weather, climate and water, and, uh, and, and we are also, for example, hosting IPCC here at WMO, and uh, we, are, we are in charge of the operational services beside, besides uh, climate uh, science and, and hydrological uh, services. The World Economic Forum estimated which are the biggest risks for global economy during the coming 10 years, and, and their conclusion was that climate action failure is number one and extreme weather is number number two. So the issues that we are dealing with, uh, they are highly, highly important. Hopefully this uh, war in Ukraine uh, is, is not going to have a major impact on global economy. Of course, we have been suffering because of COVID and, and at the moment because of that, that war. But, uh, but hopefully, hopefully in, in this 10 year scale, it's, it's going to be uh, marginal. And uh, we have seen warming globally. Uh, we, we are reporting on the status of climate, uh, and, um, and, and there, for example, this year-to-year -year variation is very much driven by El Niño La Niña variability, which is also having big impacts on, on weather patterns, especially in southern uh, hemisphere, and uh, driving both drought, drought and flooding problems uh, at the same time. And we, our estimation is that when, when we next time see so-called El Niño year, we are going to be fairly close to the low limit of Paris Agreement, uh, 1.5 degrees. The last years have been La Nina years, where we have seen this cooling of uh, Pacific uh, Ocean temperatures with uh, impacts on, on especially Southern Hemispheric weather patterns. We have stored more than 90% of the excess heat to ocean, and, and ocean has been warming, and it's giving also more energy for tropical storms. We can observe them in wider areas. And also, this is uh, contributing to the increase of evaporation, which is uh, uh, causing also flooding, flooding problems. We have estimated that one degree warming of, uh, of the, of the uh, uh, air temperature means a seven percent increase of, uh, of humidity content, uh, which is uh, contributing to the uh, flooding challenge. We have broken records in uh, main greenhouse gases uh, year by year, and, and last year there was the highest uh, increase of uh, methane concentration uh, uh, d since uh, 83 when we started uh, this kind of uh, reporting. And, and uh, part of the methane is coming from, from farmlands, uh, from rice paddies, uh, tropical wetlands, and also from cattle. And also this uh, N2O, which is the third important greenhouse gas uh, uh, land use uh, plays, plays a role. And we have seen uh, increases in, in heavy precipitation in flooding problems uh, worldwide. Here is a global map, and you can see lots of uh, green color in a Eurasian continent, some parts of Africa and some parts of uh, Americas, but especially Euro Eurasian continent has been exposed to increase of uh, flooding problems. And route, uh, here, here you can see partly the same areas uh, with these uh, yellow symbols. Uh, uh, indicating that, uh, for example, uh, Western and Southern parts of uh, Europe, uh, Middle East and uh, Western Asia and Eastern Asia, uh, Western part of Africa and, and in both Americas, some parts have been facing uh, increase of drought events. Then a uh, part of our, uh, our water resources are coming from uh, uh, glaciers which are melting and, and this uh, uh, glacier melting has been speeding up and that's bad news uh, when it comes to availability of uh, fresh water to the main rivers worldwide. And the next graph shows, uh, shows uh, uh, what has happened, uh, uh, what, what is the fraction of uh, 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 water coming, coming from rainfall and what is the fraction coming from glaciers. And for example, in Central Asia, it's very much uh, driven by melting of glaciers. And that's also the case for uh, parts of uh, uh, both Americas, uh, these Rocky Mountains and uh, and, uh, and, and and this uh, uh, melting contributes the amount of uh, water in the rivers. And same is true for, for 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 some rivers in southern and eastern Asia. In Europe, uh, it's it's uh, it's dominated by uh, by rain-fed uh, uh, origin of water, but uh, but also the alpine melting, which was uh, breaking record, by the way, uh, this summer. Uh, is, is also playing a role. We have started reporting on the status of, uh, 
of water resources and here is a trend of uh, water storage uh, for the past 20 years and uh, and these uh, 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 orange uh, and brownish colors indicate the decrease and that's very much uh, happening in Mediterranean region in uh, uh, Europe and, and, and large parts of uh, Asia and also some parts of both uh, Americas for, whereas in uh, in Africa and uh, and and um, and South America and North America there are areas where we have seen increase of uh, water storage and in the future uh, this is an this is an estimation of IPCC report uh, what what's, what's going to happen to the rainfall amounts which is uh, in the upper panel and and what's going to happen to soil moisture which is uh, of course very important for agriculture if you look at the lower panel there's 1.5 degrees 2 degrees and 4 degrees warming and and in all of the cases for example both america's uh, mediterranean region southern uh, africa and eastern asia and eurasia are going to be drier when it comes to uh, soil moisture and if you go to higher numbers of warming the, uh, the numbers are more extreme and there are some areas where soil moisture is supposed to increase and that's very much uh, a central part of uh, Africa and uh, central part of, uh, of Eurasia. And if we go to three degree warming, there's a risk that we would lose uh, uh, global yield and, and you can see red areas uh, uh, in most parts of the world and, and this is uh, demonstrating that we will lose as a net effect uh, yield because these green areas where the situation is improving is not more suitable for farming and uh, and that's, that's one of the challenges when it comes to feeding the growing population worldwide. And water is also one of the sectors which is important. And, and here we, we are also demonstrating what is the impact of another problem besides greenhouse gas emissions, namely population growth. And if you overlay population growth and water demand and availability, you can see that, for example, Africa, Middle East and, uh, and South uh, Western part of Asia are very fragile, so so they are about they are supposed to face face challenges already during the coming coming decades. And population growth is also one of the things that we should uh, try to mitigate. Sea level rise has been doubled during the past uh, 20 years, from two millimeters to more than four millimeters per year, and there's a growing contribution coming from melting of Greenland and Antarctic glacier. And IPCC uh, uh, made its uh, 1.5 degree report. Uh, demonstrating that if we would reach 1.5, we should bend the emission growth curve this decade and become carbon neutral by 2050. But for example, at Edinburgh, uh, uh, not all of the G20 countries were not able to make such uh, commitments. And uh, that's why we are now heading towards uh, the 2.5 to 3 degrees uh, warming. No, no more towards 3 to 5, which was uh, the risk uh, uh, still uh, when the uh, last uh, big IPCC report in 2014 was published. And we have good means to, uh, to, to mitigate climate change. Uh, IPCC made estimates of what is the impact of various action and what is their cost as well. And this length of the bar indicates uh, impact and, uh, and, and the colors indicate the cost. So these blue colors are uh, low cost uh, means and for example solar and wind energy they are such means. But then we have lots of uh, uh, high bars in, in, in forestry and agriculture. So this land use uh, is also a very important area for mitigation. And we should, for example, stop uh, deforestation of uh, tropical rainforests. And, uh, and we, we should try to uh, change our uh, agricultural uh, behavior so that there would be less emissions coming from, from that uh, sector. And in transport sector, which are these uh, 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 small blue bars all together, there's, there's potentially big impact. With these words, uh, thanks for the opportunity to address you and I, I wish you most successful meeting. Thank you.